July of this year, I took this picture of my face. And 90 days later, after discovering looks maxing on the internet, and after much work, I now look like this. I took this picture last night. I was just sending a dumb Snapchat to a friend, and I was shocked. And just seeing the amount of improvement that I've made um, motivated me to make this video. That and the first video got 700,000 views. And I know the changes I've made in this short period of time have been significant because I've had a lot more interactions with girls. You know, I've had situations where girls actually actually approach me. I and mean, I'm just a lot more confident when talking with girls. This glow up was not caused by puberty itself. I'm 23 years old. I was already done physically developing when I started looks maxing. Um, this change was made by adopting good habits and retiring old habits. This video will be different than the last video because in this one, I'm just going to do an entire walkthrough of the most important things I did to change my face. The most important thing for changing the face is to lose weight. Ideally for a male to maximize their facial aesthetics, you wanna get down to about 10% body fat. In this process of my looks maxing journey, I've lost about 20 pounds. And this is what my current physique looks like. I'd say this is indicative of about 11% body fat. And I'm sure a lot of you guys probably saw my physique right there and maybe you think it's impressive. But the truth is, is that getting that lean and achieving that level of body fat is not that hard. And anything fatter than that, anything over 12% body fat, in my opinion, I would consider you to not be in shape as a man. And I know that sounds harsh because today you can walk into the doctors at 20% body fat and he'll tell you you're perfectly healthy, but the truth is it's not. And it's not healthy for social dynamics either. If you're not inside that 10 to 12% body fat mark, majority of women are gonna find you a lot less desirable as if you were. What kind of crap are you putting on the internet, man? You're not an expert, you're not a doctor, so I act like it. I don't think I need a PhD to tell people how to make their face look better. <laughs> yeah, boy. There's literally no situation in which losing fat doesn't make the face more attractive. I wanted to have a whole section just dedicated to eyes because they're that important. There's a reason that for the thumbnail of this video, I brightened and changed the color of my eyes because they're the first thing that people look at. They catch your attention. The whites of our eyes are actually a health mark that us human beings subconsciously use to determine the health of an individual. For that reason, I use these eye drops every day. The brand is Lumify um, and I just use them to really make the white to my eyes pop. I've always had a problem with bloodshot eyes. I'm not sure why, maybe it's lack of sleep. But yeah, this completely removes any of the redness in the whites of my eyes. Um, and I actually think it makes the iris a little brighter. Like it makes the color more pronounced. Now, the actual shape of the eye is extremely important. I'm sure you've seen the popular trend on TikTok about having prey eyes versus hunter eyes. Hunter eyes obviously being the more attractive of the two. I naturally have like a mix of the two, not specifically prey or hunter eyes but I wanted my eyes to be more hunter-like, so there's things I've been doing to achieve this. Some people refer to this as squint maxing, but I just exercise my orbicularis muscle every day. Uh, this is essentially the eyelid muscle. I do about 100 partial squints every night before I go to bed, um, but more importantly, I just aim to hold a partial squint throughout the day. The goal of this is to strengthen and tighten the lower eyelid muscle, which will result in a more hunter-like eye shape. All this is, at the end of the day, is a habit. It's just like having good posture. If you can get used to intentionally contracting that orbicularis muscle, it'll become habitual and you'll start to do it subconsciously. I, I also naturally tend to have dark circles and eye bags under my eyes, and that's pretty common for a lot of dudes. I got rid of my hollow zombie height look almost completely by using volufilin. This stuff is really interesting. I mean, you apply it to the skin and over time it accumulates fat in the area you applied it. Um, so you gotta be pretty careful because it is permanent. But yeah, literally just a drop every night. Um, has made a huge difference and added a lot of volume to my under eye area. Last thing for eyes, which is debatably the most important thing, is eyebrows. First of all, as you can tell, as I'm talking to you right now, my eyebrows aren't really moving and I'm doing that intentionally. I used to have a huge problem, and you probably do too, with just moving my eyebrows a ton when casually talking to somebody. And the reason this is a problem is because the eyebrows are super expressive. So I'll just use a quick example, right? If I'm talking to a girl I'm interested in and my, my shit's moving like this, right? It's not going to convey the same demeanor and emotion as if I talk to her like this, right? That one thing has literally changed the way that girls react to me on one-on-one -on -one dialogue. But not only that, 
Making sure that both eyebrows are still ensures that the face is symmetrical while speaking. Symmetry is like the most important component for facial attraction, so ideally you want the eyebrows to be as symmetrical as possible. I had asymmetrical eyebrows my whole life and I had no idea until I used this filter. It shows the three most important things, which is where the eyebrow should start, where it should end, and approximately where the arch should be. The last thing I do for eyebrows, which honestly makes a huge difference, is I style them. This is as simple as I comb my eyebrows up, um, and then I spray hairspray on my fingertip, and then I run my finger across the eyebrows just to make sure that they hold throughout the entire day. Messy and tangled eyebrows are just indicative of poor grooming, um, and styling each eyebrow the same, once again, just adds symmetry. I literally had pizza face like three months ago, like embarrassing acne, and the main thing I did to clear up my skin was completely cut out sugar and dairy from my diet. That's it, it's simple, but it's not easy. Majority of the time, like nine times out of 10, acne can be attributed to poor diet. You don't need to go to the dermatologist, have them give you some drug to wipe the acne off your face. You need to not eat like shit, bro. Aside from cutting down on sugar and dairy, bare minimum, you need a nightly skin routine. I'm assuming you guys work out every day, so if you don't shower, you at least need to wash your face with a cleanser before bed, because if not, that will make you break out bad. After that, simply apply a moisturizer to your face, and for my lips, I just use Aquaphor. There's literally no reason to be carrying chapstick around with you every day. Just put Aquaphor on your lips once in the morning and once at night, and you're good. And lastly, make sure you switch your pillowcase out at least once a week because bacteria gets embedded in there and that'll get into your pores as you sleep, causing frequent breakouts. Something I recently started doing is I ice my face in the morning. What this does is it shrinks the pores in your face, which is gonna prevent the bacteria, which is responsible for acne, from getting in those pores. As far as achieving a nice tan complexion, what I like to do every day is spend at least 15 to 20 minutes in direct sunlight. I usually do this by walking. And on top of that, I supplement with 75,000 IUs of beta carotene every day. Beta carotene is a pigment found in carrots and it's responsible for their vibrant orange color. I like to mega dose beta carotene. I find it gives me a natural tan and it gives my skin a little more vibrancy, which us human beings subconsciously associate with a healthy body. Enhancing my jawline has been a big focus of mine these past several months. I wanted a more masculine and strong look to my face in general um, and just having a wider and more prominent jaw seemed to be the obvious solution. I'd say the biggest difference aside from losing body fat has come from mewing. Mewing is basically just having correct tongue posture where the tongue is pressed up against the palate of the mouth. If you do this right, it actually engages a wide variety of muscles in the face, but more importantly, when the tongue is on the roof of the mouth, it pulls the hyoid bone up, making the jawline more prominent. When you're mewing, there's obviously a temporary effect of looking more attractive in the moment, um, but there's also lots of evidence supporting long-term positive change in facial structure. Second to mewing, I would say using a jaw trainer has helped the most in making my jawline more pronounced. What these do is they essentially exercise the master muscles, causing them to grow and protrude a bit more, which results in a wider looking jaw. Brad Pitt is like the first person that comes to mind when I think of somebody who has really developed master muscles. And unfortunately, with how malleable and chewy our food is nowadays, this is a huge problem. Like if you look around, you'll see most guys have non-existent master muscles, just completely underdeveloped. So yeah, these jaw trainers, they're a great solution as long as you're not using the ones that require you to chew with your front teeth. We want to mimic a natural chewing motion, and the best way to do this is to invest in a jaw trainer which uses the back molars. I had a lot of bloating in my face, as you can see in this video here, um, and to get that excess water on my face, I cleaned up my diet. The two things which will bloat you the most and make the face look puffy are carbohydrates and sodium. What worked for me was keeping my daily carbohydrate intake at around 125 grams, um, and for sodium, I don't really track it. I just honestly try to keep it as low as possible. And one last thing I do in the morning, as I said before, I ice my face um, to really tighten the skin around the jaw, and I also use a gua sha. The gua sha is a tool that removes subcutaneous fluid from under the skin, and it just does a good job at deep loading the face for the day. And I can't leave out the obvious, as I've stated before, losing body fat will be the best way to make the jawline more defined. Without that, none of these things really matter. It would be like training your abs every day, but being too fat to see your six pack. My hairline was like super snapped up. People were constantly commenting about it um, and buzzing my hair didn't help, it just made it a lot more visible. If hair isn't a concern to you, I would just honestly skip through this section, but if hair is at all a concern to you, um, here's the stack that I think any guy of any age could use to keep the hair on their head and more than likely regrow it. You need to take finasteride. If you don't take finasteride, forget any of this shit because it's not gonna work. Finasteride is a must. It's a pharmaceutical drug that blocks DHT, which is the hormone that's responsible for hair loss. If you take finasteride, I can almost promise you, you will not 
not lose any more hair off your head. And for people that claim that it lowers testosterone, it does not. I mean, look at any study and you'll see that it in fact raises testosterone, usually by around 10%. But keeping the hair isn't enough. We also want to regrow it. This is also pretty simple. You want to buy a derma stamp, minoxidil, and ideally rosemary oil as well. This is critical. You want to put the needle length on the derma stamp at 0.5 millimeters, and then you want to stamp the targeted area twice a week. After you stamp, apply both minoxidil and rosemary oil at that area. And for the five days that you don't derma stamp, still apply minoxidil and rosemary oil to the targeted areas. After doing way too much research, that would be my suggested protocol for anybody trying to regrow their hair, and I personally have had great success doing so. I'm not a model by any means, and this is all very much still a work in progress for myself. And truth be told, this is a long game. You know, looks maxing is a very long process in itself. The stuff takes years and years to actually see very uh, noteworthy and significant results. One thing I will say is how I came across all this information and how I got such expedient results is I actually purchased an ebook. Um, this was an ebook that was all things facial attraction related, all things facial improvement related, basically just kind of like a giant looks maxing guide. This book helped me tremendously and for that reason I'm going to plug it. It'll be in the description below if you're at all interested. All the information I've given you today and loads more I really haven't had time to fully dissect the book are in there. So yeah, and one last thing, please like the video, dude. I just dropped an information bomb on you. Like quite literally, if you use this information accordingly, you could frankly change your life. Thanks for watching, guys. I know kind of a little bit of a different video today. I was just kind of sitting here talking, but hopefully nonetheless, you enjoyed.